So let's get started with tonight's topic. Um, tonight, we are talking about all things daily schedules. And this is something that I've had on my list that people have asked me to make um, for years and years. Now, I have a couple of different things to share with you, but the one that I'm going to share first is new. So I've always had daily schedules, examples of daily schedules um, on my website at Pre-K Pages. It's been there for years and years. And because people, one of the questions they would always email me over the years um, was, you know, what's your schedule look like? So teachers that get moved to the grade, new to the grade level and so forth, what does your schedule look like? So I had both my full and my half day schedules there at Pre-K Pages. And then um, I think I put them in one of my packets as well, like the parent packet or something like that, um, so that teachers could give that resource to parents to know um, so they would know what it looked like, but I never had it all by itself. So I created a freebie and the freebie is an editable template. So it's just, I printed these on um, Astro Bright's paper just so that they would stand out. And this one here is the AM schedule. So this is my schedule. So when you open the freebie, Tom will drop a link to it uh, for you below. It's the editable daily schedules. Um, my words are there. You can have the PDF version if you want to use it as a reference. And then there's an editable template, which has my words uh, and times typed on it, but then you can change it. So there's two things inside that zip file. So we have half day, and then we have full day, and then we have the half day PM, if you want to see the difference in the two AM and PM. They're basically the same except for the times, but people always ask, so I put them in there. So we have those three templates are now available over at Pre-K Pages as a free download. So all you have to do is visit that editable daily schedule page, preschool daily schedules, and you can grab these. You can use these in a number of ways. Of course, many of you are required to post your schedule in your classroom, so this will make an organized uh, way for you to do it. It's not fancy, but it does get the job done. And then of course you can send it home with parents at the beginning of the year so they will know what your schedule is like. Um, we always had to turn ours into the office in case there was ever an emergency, they would know where to look for us. Um, in my sub plans, of course, my substitute um, folder, we wanted to have a daily schedule in there for the substitute. Um, so there's a number of different ways that you can use a daily schedule in your classroom. And then if you, um, if you open the one that's a PDF, all the links are clickable. So if you're a new teacher or you're new to the grade level and you want to know, okay, well, this says circle time, what's that look like? You can click on that. And this says um, literacy centers, what does that look like? And math and writing and uh, morning tubs and all that stuff, what does that look like? So those are linked in the document as well in the PDF version. So you can just click on those to get more info. Um, so I printed mine on Astro Brights. When you print yours, they'll be on white paper unless you choose to use um, a colorful paper as well. So that's a free printable um, that will help you save time creating a daily schedule. You can see my example if you want to. So that's a freebie that we'll start with. Hi there, Carrie from Tennessee. Hey Carrie, I met you in Atlanta. So exciting. Oh, and that's where I was last week. So last week, um, that just reminded me. Um, last week I was, um, let's see, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was in um, California for the um, Southern California TK and Kindergarten Conference. TK is Transitional Kindergarten. It's the name that they have for what most of us call public pre-K. Um, but they have a special cutoff date, so they gave it a special name. Um, so I was there for that conference. It was a, a two-day conference, and um, the organizers gave us all flare pens. Ah, how cool is that? I walked in on the first day, and it says, um, there's no denying that you've got a flair for presenting. Thank you for being a featured speaker. <laughs> that was stinking cool. Thank you so much, Shannon, if she's out there and her team. Um, that's a, an incredible conference if you're on the West Coast. Um, it takes place in Pasadena, um, California, which is a beautiful location for February. And if you missed it, I went live in the vendor hall. They had more than a thousand people there. I forget how many were in actual attendance, but it was a really large conference. And I went live in the vendor hall at Art Felt Puppets and um, had a great time talking with Sandrina 
at Art Felt there. So if you want to go and check out the vendor hall, you can go and do that. I wanted to get back to the vendor hall on Saturday, but I had four back-to-back -back sessions and I just didn't get to it. It's hard to go live when you're presenting all day. So, okay. So then the other daily schedule thing we have, um, and that re Carrie reminded me of that because I saw Carrie in Atlanta when I went there for NACI. So um, we already talked about the free printable daily schedule template. And then, okay, so this is a question I get all the time and it doesn't matter that it's the middle of the year. Um, this is something that teachers ask me a lot. So if your transitions aren't quite what you want them to be, or if they could, if you could use a little help with transitions, or they take too long, or your kids are a little off the wall. Um, one of the things I always ask teachers first when they say that is, do you have a visual picture schedule? And if the answer is no, um, then I, I tell them to implement this right away. When you make changes in your classroom like this, there is no need to wait until next year, right? Because if you're gonna make a positive change, do it now and work the kinks out before the next group of kids come. Don't let the current group of kids suffer. So you can do this at any time. So I have these over in my store and um, your schedule is probably gonna look different. These are just little pictures, okay? They're editable. This is a visual picture schedule. So each time of the day, um, has words in a picture, but it's editable. So whatever language or words that you use to describe this, you can type in and print it out. So let's say this is just an example. This isn't how my schedule really looks. I just stuck them in here really quick because I was going to go live. Um, let's say it's circle time and then read aloud. Well, a lot of a lot of times those things go together. Small groups, snacks, centers, dismissal. And I have this chart folded in half because I'm just only going to show a little bit of it on the screen because if I fold it out all the way, then you won't be able to see the whole thing. So this is a very abbreviated schedule. So what you do is you type in the words that you want and there's tons of cards. Tom will drop a link to the visual um, picture schedule page and you can see all the different pictures that are available in this and then you can type your own words in your own language or however you want to do it and then you put them in a little pocket chart or whatever you have now these particular ones I printed on Avery magnet paper because I usually like to put my visual picture schedule on my um, oil drip pan that I use for circle time and I have a whole post about that over at Pre-K Pages as well. Um, but to go live tonight, I just put it up here. Um, and I did use um, a pocket chart like this. This is a pocket chart from the Target um, dollar spot. Um, it's not a dollar anymore though, they're $3 now, but they don't have them all the time, they have them sometimes. And I stuck the pictures in here. And then here's the deal with a visual picture schedule. So a visual picture schedule isn't a magic pill. So you don't put it on the wall and it magically transforms your transitions or your kids, right? A visual picture schedule is a tool. It's not a decoration that you put on your wall. So you have to use it and here is how you would use it. So let's say your kids just walked in, it's the beginning of the day and um, maybe they've all arrived, they've, you've all done your um, greeting at the door, they've signed in in some way, they've put their belongings away, maybe they've had some table time or morning tub time and now you want to call them for circle. So you could do a little chant. Um, I like to make them up because that's the kind of person I am. I just make little chants up. Kids love to chant. You know how they'll start chanting each other's name? Mary, Mary, Mary. And you're like, how did that just turn into a chant? and then everything turns into a chant, right? So use that natural interest. And so I might say something like, it's time for circle time. Yes, it's redundant, I know, I don't care. It's time for circle time. Hi-ho, did you know it's time for circle time? And then I have a little clothespin and I just bought, I replenished my clothespin stock and I forgot to get them out. But I would take my clothespin and put it right here next to circle time. So now they have a visual, right? They're seeing the picture 
I'm pointing to it with my clothespin. They're singing with their mouth, they're listening with their ears, and then I add a little movement with their hands. So the only body part that I haven't engaged that can cause trouble is the feet. <laughs> so the more parts of them you can engage, the better, and the less likely they will be to cause disruption, right? Um, so then we'll do that little transition. So this is obviously very close to me in my circle time area on the wall. That's why I have it usually on my oil drip pan. And then after we do our circle time, my kids, they get used to this. After the first week of school, they understand that this is a tool that we use to transition. And so what it does is it helps kids focus during transition time. It gives them closure on what you're currently doing and it introduces the next thing. So when we were finished with circle, um, read aloud really doesn't go here. So I'm gonna put it down here. I might go, it's time for small groups now. It's time for small groups now. Hi ho, did you know it's time for small groups now? And I put the clip right here. And I just added that little jazz hands in there <laughs> to get their hands moving. So you've got their eyes engaged because you're pointing to the picture. You've got their ears engaged. They're listening to you sing. Their mouth is engaged because they're singing along and their little hands are engaged um, as well. So it helps them focus and transition more smoothly. Every single time we transition, um, I'm going to move that clothespin down. You can also glue something really cute on the end of your clothespin, like a smiley face, a star, a heart, whatever it is that you want. Um, I've done that. Sometimes I change the little thing on the end of the clothespin with the season. They think that's really cute. So it could be a heart, it could be a shamrock, it could be um, anything. They th and sometimes I even do it just with stickers. They love it. And then at the end of the day, it's really important you know, um, to do it at the very end as well. So they have closure at the end of the day. So a visual picture schedule helps provide kids with a sense of safety and security um, in, because they're gonna know what comes next. If kids feel comfortable in the daily routine and they know what comes next, you're gonna have fewer problems during transition time. So if you've ever had a kid who says, is it time to go home now? Is it time to go home now? Is it time to go home now? <laughs> Those are kids who don't feel safe with the um, routines and procedures. That doesn't mean you've done a bad job. That child just might, might need more time and help um, adjusting to the routine or becoming familiar with the routine. But let me tell you that all of my kids know about the picture schedule and they get it and it helps ease those transitions. So having a visual picture schedule is really gonna help in addition to having your one that you've edited and printed on paper. These are awesome, but of course they are paper. So it, what looks great on paper isn't always what happens in real life, we know that. So quite often I have to tweak my schedule as things change throughout the year. I'm like, oh, that is never gonna happen in that time frame, and I have to adjust things around. Um, but if you have something in writing to work with, of course, your administrators are going to want that, of course. Um, you have that here. That's a good basis to start with. And then when it comes to the picture schedule, if anything happens, like if we, um, you know how sometimes you have things like picture day or whatever, and you have to skip something. So let's say um, they always put pre-k pictures in the morning so let's say i have this i'll have this turned around and this turned around because i know it's going to take an hour to take pictures of all 20 some of my kids and then i'll explain to them that today we're not going to do um circle time or read aloud and basically i've just set myself up for failure because the minute you change your daily routine <laughs> they go off the wall but um I could turn those around. I could add something special in there because there's so many of these different little um, picture cards. And so I can change things up really quick because they just flip in and out of the pockets. You can also, if you have certain days that you do certain things, certain specials or chapel or whatever, you can put those behind and then switch them out. So um, a picture schedule is a must, I feel, um, in every early childhood classroom. It's really gonna help smooth your transitions out. So I'm gonna go through and look at the comments. Hey, Sandra, whoop. I have shaky cam tonight. Uh, oh, I hope I didn't do anything to Sandra's comment there. Um, Mary Beth, I can't see all of your question, Mary Beth. It just, I just can see wondering how many students 
I'm going to assume you're wondering how many students are in an average class, maybe. Um, it's really going to depend on your program. So here in Texas, our public pre-kindergarten program has no cap. So I've had more than 20 in my classroom. That's pretty common. All by yourself with no help. Um, can I implement a visual picture schedule? And I can't read the rest of it. It got cut off, but I'm going to say, yes, you can in any grade level. Um, visual picture schedule is going to help all children. Some children need it more than others. So if you have any children with special needs, a visual picture schedule is going to be a fabulous tool. And then, of course, you can do individual picture schedules for those kids who need more than just a general transition. Like, if a general transition going from the carpet to the table or vice versa is too much for a child, then you can do individual picture schedules um, and you can have the steps of first I stand up, I walk to the table, I sit in the chair. You can have things, I've, I've used those types of, of individual picture schedules with the kids who need it because if they, if they can't follow that routine from the carpet to the table and vice versa, they're gonna need extra help. So we, you can totally use it with all children. Um, let's see, do I have any close to Indiana, any conferences? Um, I don't have anything in Indiana right now. I have been to Indiana before many times. Uh, I've spoken at a couple of conferences there, early childhood conferences, but I don't have anything on my agenda right now. Um, Mississippi, hi there. Carrie says she loves free stuff. That's good. Happy Valentine's Day. Yay. All right. Jen is here. I saw Angel was, woo. Uh-oh. It says I turned quiet mode on. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. That's okay. I'll come back and read the comments later. So I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight on Valentine's evening. And um, if you haven't grabbed these already, then you're going to want to go and grab your editable daily schedule templates so you can create your own daily schedule quickly and easily. Use mine as a guide if you would like to or completely change it up. That's all up to you. If you are a member of the Teaching Tribe, these are in the vault. I just put them there a few moments ago. Hit refresh. They might be so new that you might not even see them if you've been over to the vault lately. They're also free over at Pre-K Pages, so it doesn't matter where, but I wanted to make them convenient for our members in the vault because you all have access 24-7 to all the paid printables at pre-K pages and then I try to add things there when I can. Um, and then this one will be in the vault as well. Type in daily picture schedule um, and it's also at the pre-K pages store if you're not a member. For those of you who are wondering how to join the teaching tribe or you've been on the waiting list, um, every time we have spots open up, we let people know through email. Um, so they all go in the order in which they were received. And um, so you need to check your email inbox as soon as you put your name on the waiting list. Tom will drop a link to the waiting list for you below. Um, then you need to check your email inbox to make sure that you're on the list. I had a couple people contact me today saying, I put my name on the list, but I never got an email. And so that means the spam monsters sucked it up. Um, so you have to check your spam folder too. And then if you don't see anything, let us know and we will set you up so that you can be sure to get your emails. If you use your school district email and your school district has a double verification where they make us reply that we are an approved sender, then you won't get those emails because we because of the volume of email we receive. Um, we can't do that. So um, you need to make sure that you're using an email that you have easy access to. So if your district has your email locked down and you can't get any email from outside of your district, um, then you're going to need to choose like a Gmail or something else like that because those get those won't let our emails in. So check out the vault if you're in the teaching tribe to get the daily visual picture schedule and the editable templates. And if you're not in the tribe, you can find those at Pre-K Pages. And if you're on the waiting list, you should be getting our emails, letting you know um, when it's your turn to join the teaching tribe. And then of course, we have all kinds of exciting things planned this spring uh, for everybody, including tribe members. We have a teacher appreciation goodies and we have um, all kinds of great stuff. We're gonna continue with our series on um, where in the world do you teach? 
and all that good stuff. So stay tuned to our regular, regularly scheduled broadcast every Monday and Wednesday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great night. Bye.